All right, everybody, this is Ross. I want to talk to you guys about the figs today because we now actually have a view into the in-ground figs. I had taken out the corn that was here where the summer garden was. And it was, again, it was 10 feet tall. It was really blocking the view on most of not only the garden, but also the fig trees. It's been difficult to film because of how much food I'm growing in this very small space. I'm not kidding, it's insane. Um, now my figs, what you'll notice is that they're huge. They're very dense as well. And we have them spaced very dense. I have them two feet on center. So they're three rows, two feet all the way down and two feet to the next row in between the rows as well. Along the back behind the tomato plants and these nightshades, we also have three rows of figs with the same spacing. And the majority of them now are still, they're very, very young here, guys. Um, I have a row that we planted in here that we just planted this season. So I would say about maybe 20 to 25% of them are just planted this year. Um, a large amount of them have been here now. This is their second season. And then I have about really only five trees that have been here, maybe f actually four trees that have been here for three years now. So the majority of them are quite young. And what I wanted to do in the beginning, I even said this to you guys, I wanna have them grow. I wanna have them establish themselves more because I wasn't expecting a whole lot of production this year. Now, by letting them grow, you can basically just let them um, put out a lot of shoots from the base. You're gonna get a lot more growth that way. I find the root systems get more established. Uh, the wider the canopy, the more branches up top, uh, definitely the wider the root system gets, the more established it gets. So I have succeeded in that sense, is that they're huge, they're very, very tall. I also wanted them to fruit, if I could help it. And there's where we didn't succeed. We, we did get a lot of them um, to actually put out some fruit, but the majority of them are not doing all that well in terms of their production. Uh, it's way better on the other side of the yard, on the west side. Um, there's some really good production over there but they're spaced at three feet apart. So there's a difference in spacing and there's a difference of light, of light penetration. And I have talked about that light penetration, guys, recently, a couple videos now. That light needs to get into the canopy. It needs to penetrate through here because all these branches up top at about my chest level or higher, they have a lot of fruit buds. In fact, they're all setting fruit right now and I'm gonna look like I really know what I'm doing. You know, if I showed you guys a video a month from now, um, you're gonna think to me sometime around October, let's say, let's say October 1st, they're gonna have a ton of fruit on them because of that light penetration. And you're gonna think, oh my God, Ross, what's such success you've been having? But they're not gonna ripen in time. And that's sort of the shame of all of this, is that now that they're getting so big, they're getting more light because the canopy has spread out. There's not as much density not as much internal shading. And therefore they're setting the fruits. A lot of these varieties I'm looking around, they all have those buds. They're all doing it themselves with no assistance. Um, and you might think, well, again, like I succeeded in some way, but they're not gonna ripen in time. So what I need to do, and this is for everybody out there, that if you guys are growing your figs at this density, you have them at two feet, three feet, even five feet, if you have them a very, at a pretty dense spacing, um, I mean, if you wanted to have them in the south or a really warm place, you could probably space them 10 feet, 15 feet, 20 feet. I mean, some of them get like 40 feet wide. So, you know, depending on where you guys live, depending on um, your climate and like, you know, kind of how, what you're gonna do to your tree in terms of pruning it every year, you'd wanna go further and further. But if you're gonna be really intensive, I think, with this dense spacing, you can get it to work, as I'm gonna get it to work next year, getting these varieties, uh, believe it or not, to fruit very densely. But the only way we're gonna do that, the only way we can succeed is if we thin out the number of shoots from the base. So every variety, as they're spaced two feet apart, 
needs to have at most probably four shoots from the base. And I probably wanna expand the canopy right now. So I'll take a branch like this, this is my next little goal here. And I'm gonna start bending some of these branches more laterally to kind of get the, the canopy at the base to spread out a bit. And if I can have a, a more wider canopy, a, a wider base of the tree, I can then have a wider canopy that has better light penetration, let's say right now. And therefore I'm gonna have more success. Um, so what I need to do, as I said, is thin out the number of shoots, because if you have too many, you're just not gonna succeed because you're not gonna get that light penetration. Some of these have like, let's say 10, 12, some in the back have like 15 or 20 shoots from the base. That's insane. Um, and it's no wonder they didn't set their fruits. So if you're gonna do it densely, really at all, if you're gonna grow figs in the ground at all, you need to do some thinning. And I talk about thinning every single year, but it just goes to show the utter importance of this particular technique of thinning out the shoots from the base even if you're growing them as a bush, you only want to have maybe five trunks from the base. And that's permanent. Like if you had a, you lived in a warm place and you were uh, training your figs, spread out the canes, but select only five and spread them out and give them enough room. But at the same time, probably you don't want to have more than five, right? So it's a big little tip there for the future of your trees, for the production in the current year. And I just want to tell everybody out there, with this density, you got to thin. I'm going to have no more than four. I may even go down to three per tree. So each individual variety, you'll see some of them. Actually, the Smith back there had five this year. And it's, it's almost nine feet tall. I mean, these EMT poles are 10 feet tall. So they're getting really tall, not just wide. But if you can limit the number of canes from the base, they will continue to grow tall and not so much wide, which is kind of what you want because you don't want to have them fighting for light. And that's necessarily the only form of competition that I've been able to notice in this particular system. Um, now I do have them on the west side of the house. Um, on the other side over here, getting caught here with my wire. But on the west side, um, they're at three feet. I think I may have mentioned that. And the fact that they're three feet apart, they're getting better light penetration. So going maybe, let's say, instead of two feet, I might be better off with four feet. Maybe there's a sweet spot at three, but let's say at three, I could maybe get away with four or five canes from the base, rather than let's say the three or four that these guys are all gonna have to be thinned to. So. You know, it really depends there, guys, what it is that you want to do, how you're doing this, what the spacing is. Big recommendation for anybody out there who's following along with this. I know there are people who are doing this. And uh, this will save you guys a whole year of production if uh, you wanted to get some fruit. So hit that subscribe button for me. We'll see you already soon, all right? Take care. Catch you guys later.